Hello and welcome to our extra special video for you today which is going to be on history taking. Uh, we've decided to make this video in a direct, as a direct response to some of the students and their up and coming OSCE examinations on history taking and not really knowing what it is that they need to do. Well basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a couple of easy steps on um, history taking over a couple of videos and um, I'll be using the Cam Cal Calgary Cambridge framework for um, history taking. I'll be modifying it a little bit so that I put in some extra little gems to help you in your future clinical practice. And um, without further ado, we shall move to the board and begin. So, history taking involves Calgary, Calgary Cambridge framework, 10 easy steps, and we start off with number one, which is PP, okay? And in the PP, that stands for your patient profile. Patient profile normally takes into factor the three identifying factors, which are an absolute must, okay? So that's the name, age, date of birth, what you can normally do here for some added extras is get the gender of the patient you're dealing with and if you want some extras here, get in your occupation of the patient you're dealing with and normally that gives you a, a rough idea of what you're dealing with, okay? Or who you're dealing with. So the next thing we go to now is PC. Now PC, okay, stands for Presenting Complaint. This is the reason why the person came to see you at the doctor's today. Right. Now, remember PC has normally got something behind it. Yeah? All the stuff behind the scenes that you didn't see is, is, is located in the PC. That's because when people come to the doctors, there's a lot that's happened behind the scenes before they actually walk into your consult room at the doctors. They might have thought about it for days and thought, well, you know, if that's a pain, I'll think, I'll see how it goes. Maybe in two weeks' time, if it's still there, then and I'll go to the doctors. Or they've gone around and seen other people and said, What a pain here, what do you think? Do you think somebody's serious? Do you think I should go to the doctors? And then normally they go and see somebody they really respect. It's normally people's grandmothers who've seen it all. And they go there and they see them and they say, Oh, yeah, I've got this problem. So, oh, get yourself down to the doctors. You'd be crazy walking around with a thing like that. Oh, I wouldn't even mess around. I know somebody who had something like that once or it didn't end up in a good way. And then they soon get down to the surgery to see. Okay, so that's your presenting complaint. Remember, this is what the patient tells you is wrong when they come. And to elicit this, what you normally have to start off saying is something like, um, and so what is it that I can do for you today? All right? Don't fall into the trap of saying things like, so what brings you here? Because that's when people come up with really, really smart comments like, I came by bus, doctor. Or I was brought in the ambulance, doctor. So that's your presenting complaint. So you've got things like cough, pain, um, can't sleep, weight loss, palpitations, okay, so these are all your presenting complaints things. Next. Number three, history of presenting complaints. HPC, history of presenting complaints. Now I'm going to write here this is equal to the gossip, okay? This is the place where those of you who like to gossip and get the juice on people, you can get people down. Straight down, okay? This is the sort of place where those people who like to gossip, they can just have the patient exposed within a couple of minutes. Everything about them, okay? Imagine going into a room where you've got somebody who's really good at being gossipy and they can just ask you one or two questions and they can just leave you exposed and you've revealed your innermost, darkest secrets. Okay? This is where they do well. Why? It's because they start off with a very open question. Hey, so how are you doing today? All oh, right, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, and where is it you live again? Oh, right, okay, okay, okay. And they go deeper and deeper 
and deeper and deeper, and before you know it, you're exposed for who you are. So always start here. Students always trip up here. Always start with an open question, especially for exams. Always start with an open question. So typical open questions are, so what is it that we may do for you today? Okay. And the patient normally then has their cue to begin talking, and they'll say, well, well what it is, doctor? Oh, for the last couple of weeks, I've just... Oh, I've just not been right, I've just had this pain and it's, it's come and it's gone, it's just beginning to affect me at work now and I just went to I just went to the pharmacy, I took some pills and things and oh, it's not getting any better, it's some standard stuff at home and I just thought I'd better come and see you because I'm really worried about this now. Okay, and they just give you everything right there. Now, there are some people who can really just talk the hind legs off a donkey. Okay. Now for those people you have to make sure that you curtail how much they say after a little while. But normal research says that if you allow people to start talking, they can talk up to about two minutes normally and then they stop. Maximum two minutes ish and then they stop. But remember, you obviously only have five minutes or so. So to allow someone to talk for two minutes, you might leave yourself a bit short changed. So just be a bit careful with that. So a typical one which works quite well is if the patients come in with something like a pain history, you can use something called Socrates. You can still use Socrates for all other um, histories of presenting complaint, but it works very well for pain. I'm going to take you through the pain model, and then with that you can transfer it and use it for other presenting complaints in future. So let's take you through Socrates, because it's quite comprehensive in the things that it covers. So S in Socrates stands for sight. So this would be the site of the pain. Where is it? And normally patients can point to a pain. Like, oh, I think it's there. I think it's there. I think it's here. O, onset. Okay, so it's onset of the pain. So how fast did it come on? Did it come on quite suddenly? Were you sat there just playing around one minute and suddenly, Aah! or did it come on quite slowly? And it was like in the afternoon at lunchtime, it just felt that little twinge or a niggle. And then by, uh, by the evening, you were just beginning to struggle. And then by the night time, you couldn't even get to bed because the pain was just intolerable. So onset. C is the character. So the character of the pain. Now, you always get people asking you, so was it a sharp stabbing pain? Now, stabbing out. There's not many people who have been stabbed. You know. So there are not many people going to have had the pleasure of being stabbed, unfortunately. So to be able to say to you, yes, doctor, it felt just like that time when I was stabbed, I think it's been a little bit unreasonable to ask the patients this. So <laughs> the sort of things that you can ask is, can you perhaps describe the pain to me? What does it feel like? And people are very good at describing things. So you'll be surprised. Give them a chance, and normally they'll come up with, well, doctor, it just feels like as if there's somebody inside my tummy just, just wringing things out, like, like trying to wring out pain. Just squeezing and squeezing, and then oh, it feels like something heavy, doctor. Something heavy is pushing, pushing just right down here. Oh, it just feels intolerable. Okay, so they can tell you about the character. Oh, it feels quite sharp. It just feels like a thorn in my side. How oh, they got a thorn in this side, I don't know. But people sometimes do say this. Thing. So let them use their words rather than telling them about stabbings and so and so. Um, then we go on to radiation. Radiation the R. Radiation is when you get the pain there where you said it was, sight, does it go anywhere else? Okay, does it climb up your arm and down your left arm from your heart say? Hmm, I wonder what that could be. Or is it one of these pains which just stays in one place? So radiation, and that could tell us as doctors, because we know about the nervous system where nerves go, gives us quite a lot of information we think if it radiates somewhere. A is Associated factors. So, when you get this pain, what else is it associated with? Does it, some people say it makes them feel sick and just want to vomit everywhere. Okay? Some people say, oh, you just get up, come out in the sweat, all over, all over in the sweat. So these are these are things that you want to you want to elicit, or is it something they were, they were doing? Something they were doing when, when this pain came on. So it's only when I'm in the garden and I'm digging like this, just like this, it just comes like a twinge. T 
C's for timing. Okay? So some pains have timing. They only come in the morning. So, so they start every morning I get up, doctor, the same problem. Yeah. Or in the evening, it's final day, final all day. And at night, just when I'm ready to go to bed, there it all kicks off again. Okay? Remember, there are also pains which are cyclical. Okay? And a typical one would be something associated with cycling for changes. So reproductive, and we can say in women, with periods, around the time of the period, they may get a cyclical pain. So yeah, every 28 days or so. You may also have, in the kids, those pains which only come when it's time to go to school. So don't forget, we are only human after all. E is exacerbating and alleviating factors. Oops. So exacerbating and alleviating factors. So this is exacerbating. What makes it worse? What makes it only make your pain worse? Oh yes, doctor, absolutely. Every time I go to, every time I go to just do that, say, oh, just, just feel it coming right around here. Agony, absolute agony. Alleviating factors is like, oh, doctor, you know, I, I, when it comes to pain, I just. Oh, I never get comfortable, but then just the other day I just found that if I just get sometimes even just like an ice pack and just put it there, just hold it right there, oh, that's the only relief I get. It only lasts five minutes, but that's the only relief I get. Okay, so that's your alleviating and that's an alleviating factor. So the last one is severity. So severity is talking about how bad the pain is. So normally we give them a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst pain they've ever had in their life. So make sure it's the worst pain they've ever had in their life that they're scoring it against. Okay? Because you normally ask people this, so give me a number between 1 and 10 of where this pain features. 10 being the worst you've ever had in your life, and some people will say 11. And you just think, what does that mean? Okay? So you make sure they get it in between the 1 and the 10. Then we move on to... This now, which is past medical history, PMH, past medical history. For past medical history, the things you're trying to find out here is have they had a problem like this before? Have they had any other problems before? Okay. Um, are they seeing any doctors at the hospital? If they're going to the hospital with their outpatient, and the name of the doctor, perhaps you can give you an idea of the ward or department that that they're being seen for. Um, you can ask them questions like. Have they ever been to hospital for any operations? I remember people's ideas of operations are very different these days because we have a lot of minimally invasive procedures and lots of daycare cases where people come in in the morning, they have their procedure in the middle of the day and they go home in the evening. Okay? So for most people these days, they don't call that an operation. That's just, you know, I just went to doctors and just got a little camera put in and they just did that and that was it. This is a keyhole surgery. Oh, lovely. That's not a real operation. A real operation, they get a knife and they cut all the way down here or something. So just be careful that people understand what an operation is. And you can even ask the question, have you, have you ever been under anaesthetic gas before? Okay. So anaesthetic gas um, normally means big procedure and that might help to trigger their memory. You can ask if the GP is investigating them for anything at home. Because if the GP is investigating them for something, you need to know about that. That is quite important.